Uh, well, I'd say my my initial interest came from uh, reading things from Srila Prabhupada and Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati. So that's, you know, and I'm not even sure how long ago that was. I mean, we have, if we look, I have this on a, on my own website where Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati says that a no mechanical system, and I want you, you mentioned decentralization. I'd like to clarify a little bit that I'm looking at two facets of organizational structure and culture, whether or not something is centralized or decentralized, and whether it is something is organic or bureaucratic. So Srila Prabhupada both wanted something organic and decentralized. Srila Bhakti is not just everybody spoke mostly about organic versus bureaucratic. As Srila Prabhupada spoke about both. And, and here we see... How do you differentiate between those two classifications? Uh, you said uh, organic. Yeah. Well, let me answer the first question first, and then I'll yeah, get. Sure. Is that sure. right? Sure, sure. That's that's another. <laughs> that's, sure, please. But, but that is an excellent question. Uh, but anyway, my interest came from reading these statements from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati first that there should be no mechanical system. That it, and the idea of an organized church in an intelligible form indeed marks the close of the living spiritual movement. Now, this word "living." is organic. So this is in direct opposition to bureaucratic. And the great ecclesiastical establishments, so here again, he's talking about bureaucracy, are the dikes and the dams to retrain the current and cannot be held by any such contrivances. They indeed indicate a desire on the part of the masses to exploit the spiritual movement for their own purposes. They also unmistakably indicate the end of the absolute and unconventional guidance of the bona fide spiritual teacher. Uh, so okay. mm-hmm. and, and it's heavy. It's it's really, I mean, Srila Bhakti Sinanta here is very heavy. He says, no stable religious arrangement for instructing the masses has yet been successful. He says that the mechanical adoption of the unconventional life by any person will not make him a fit teacher of religion. Regulation is necessary for controlling the inherent worldliness of conditioned souls, but no mechanical regulation has any value even for such a place. So then also reading things from Srila Prabhupada, which perhaps are better known. Uh, this, this one was Gopi Pranadana Prabhu's, one of his favorite. Our leader shall be careful not to kill the spirit of enthusiastic service, which is individual, spontaneous, and voluntary. All of us should become expert managers and preachers. That's decentralized. Always a challenge, a great achievement to be gained by a voluntary desire to do it. That's talking about decentralized. Forget this centralization and bureaucracy. And things must be done very nicely by cooperation. That's both organic and decentralized. This is one of the funniest ones. Uh, Well, they mistake. You say they mistake. Who are they? You say you do mistake. Don't say they. This is bureaucracy. They, you are all they. So that's a very decentralized concept. And then, of course, this is the big one that, you know, Sheila Prabhupada wrote this in 1972. Big plan for centralization of management. I do not at all approve of such plan. Do not centralize anything. If I did not interfere, the whole thing would have been killed. Do not think in this way of big corporation, big credit, centralization. These are all nonsense proposals. The movement is for training men to be independently thoughtful and competent in all areas of departments of knowledge and action, not for making bureaucracy. Once there is bureaucracy, the whole thing will be spoiled. So, you know, it's those sort of of statements that, that sparked my interest. But I must admit that, like many other devotees that I've spoken to and that, you know, consider these things, uh, I basically dismiss them because I had the mistaken belief, which many people have, that an organization by definition had to be bureaucratic and centralized, at least to some extent. I, I just thought those were synonyms. I thought organization and bureaucracy were synonyms. So I didn't really do much until I entered um graduate program, when I was getting my master's and PhD, my master's is in uh, school management. I have an MSA, so a master of school administration. 
and my PhD is a specialty in leadership. And then we were studying different organizational forms. And the head of the School of Education, specifically, uh, separate from class, said to me, you know, I really think you should read this book by Mintzberg. I mean, you're talking like a big, thick, highly academic, highly technical book where he said, this is the Bible of organizational theory and organizational culture. And there, Mintzberg describes five different organizational structures, defines what is centralization, defines what is bureaucracy, and describes how you can have an organization that is neither bureaucratic nor centralized. And then this was like the big eureka moment where I went, oh, <laughs> Shila Bhakti Siddhartha Sarasvati and Shila Prabhupada knew what they were talking about. What a surprise. And, you know, <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry to, to admit that up until that time, I, I didn't understand it. And then I was like, oh, you can have a decentralized, organic organization and movement. And then I became very enthused to try to share that vision with others especially since both Jiva Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati and A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada are so heavy about it. They don't say, oh, it's not such a good thing or it might make some difficulty. It's, it's going to kill everything. It's going to spoil everything. So okay. that's my answer. That's quite striking. 